Each new year, thousands of Oklahomans resolve to lose weight, eat better, or get more exercise. But after a few days, the majority return to old, poor diet and couch potato habits. It's led to epidemics of obesity and diabetes. As we begin 2013, 65% of all Oklahomans are either overweight or obese. And almost 278,000 adult Oklahomans have diabetes. Between 1995 and 2010, the number of diabetic cases in our state shot up 226%. That's the largest increase for any state, according to the Centers for Disease Control. Dr. Douglas Nolan is medical director at Hastings Hospital in Tahlequah. Of course, we want to be number one when it comes to football, but for diabetes, we don't want to be number one. Diabetes is a condition where the body can't properly regulate blood sugar. Having it can shorten life expectancy by as much as 15 years. The long-term complications are heart disease, kidney disease, um, amputations because infections don't heal right. Our body does not work right when the sugar is too high. Diabetes cost J.T. Solteski one of his legs. They took the leg off March of 12, and uh, it took 12 weeks for it to heal since I'm a diabetic. The Harold Ham Oklahoma Diabetes Center estimates more than 113,000 adult Oklahomans have undiagnosed diabetes, and another 678,000 pre-diabetes. The centers says that's 39% of all Oklahomans being diabetic or pre-diabetic. Solteski learned he was pre-diabetic at age 20. When I was 20, I was, you know, a, a borderline diabetic. But, you know, as time went on, I just, you know, I didn't, I just didn't take care of myself. And uh, I just, you know, ate anything that got in front of me. Ignoring his condition didn't make it go away. Instead, it led to fully developing the disease. Since I've lost my leg, you know, it's a different story now, you know, but it's, I just got to take care of what I got now. Because now, diabetes is affecting his sight. I'm having trouble with my eyes now, but this eye here, you know, I've been to the specialist and, you know, they run the dye and stuff like that. And, and this eye here, they said that there's nothing they could do no more. Native Americans such as Solteski are more than twice as likely to develop diabetes as non-Hispanic whites of the same age. African Americans, Mexican Americans, and Asians are also at greater risk for diabetes. Adults aren't the only Oklahomans developing the disease. Kylie Reed was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in grade school. In our state, most diabetic children are type 1, which can run in families. Reed tests her blood often and takes insulin to keep her sugar under control. You have to take multiple and daily injections with pins or uh, your insulin. 12% of Oklahoma's diabetic children have type 2 diabetes. Type 2, once called adult onset diabetes, was primarily seen in older people and rarely in children until just a generation ago. Developing type 2 is more associated with lifestyle than type 1. Things like obesity, eating a poor diet, and being sedentary. We're seeing it more and more in very young children. I have four and five year olds that come to us that have already been diagnosed and already on insulin and doing daily injections and, and finger sticks. Audrey Etheridge has been a school nurse for 23 years. When I first started, maybe one or two diabetic students in my schools, I routinely every year now have seven to ten uh, in the six to ten schools that I cover. So we're seeing more of it. We look for children um, who are having frequent urination, uh, very thirsty all the time, um, feeling tired and maybe confused and not performing to the best of their ability. We are always on the watch for children displaying those symptoms um, caused mostly by being overweight at an early age and that perpetuating year after year and causing the body not to be able to process uh, the insulin like it should. 18 to 24 year olds are another fast growing group of Oklahomans with type 2 diabetes. Our state has twice as many in this group as the national average. And diabetes is expensive. 
The Ham Center anticipates treating just the diagnosed cases will cost $6.6 billion for the year just ended. That's twice the amount spent just five years ago. Cutting the cost of treatment, the number of deaths, and complications from diabetes starts with getting people to eat healthier, lose weight, and be more active. A lot of the men think that they have to be back in training. They think of high school going for two-a-day football, and that's not what we're trying to get across. Being more active can be as simple as walking. Realistically, what, we, what we'd advise is to do at least 30 minutes, four or five days out of the week. Dietitian Katie Ruinen says eating better means smaller portions, fewer sugary foods, and more whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. She also recommends a portion of patients. Diabetes doesn't develop or go away overnight. If there was a magic bullet, we would all be taking it. We would all, <laughs> we would all be using that. And I think that's, um, you know, people, human nature is wanting that instant gratification. And um, diabetes, managing diabetes, prediabetes, wherever at the spectrum we're at, um, it's, it's really, it's a commitment. You know, it's lifestyle change. and. We all should be looking at what we can do better. It's not just because you have diabetes or because you have prediabetes, that's when you need to make the lifestyle change. Um, we can all be looking at how can we get a little more activity? How can we be eating a little bit healthier? So when we ring out 2013, there could be fewer Oklahomans at risk for diabetes and obesity.